if you're not yet sold on diagonalization of matrices. Here's a nifty example. So, start with the Fibonacci numbers. First two numbers are going to be equal to 1. To get the next number in the sequence, we just add the previous two. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and so on. So, we have a recursive sequence. Now, if I wanted the 50th Fibonacci number, we'd have to compute the Fibonacci numbers from the 1st to the 49th, take the 48th and the 49th, add them together. So that seems horribly inefficient. Instead, we can use the Binet formula. So that'll get us directly to the 50th Fibonacci number. Now, this states we have two numbers. First number is going to be the golden mean, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Second number is going to be 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. I raise both to the nth power, take the difference, and then divide by square root of 5. That gives me the nth Fibonacci number. So, that seems pretty unlikely. Okay, this is always going to be an integer. So, let's take a look at a few examples before we get to the linear algebra. First, let's verify that f1 and f2 are equal to 1 using our formula. So, if I let m be equal to 1, get this expression here, the term on the inside is going to collapse to a square root of 5, so we get a 1 to come out, and that checks. Then, if I let m be equal to 2, okay, we have to work out both of these squares. When I do that, so that's this expression here, that collapses to a square root of 5, and again, a 1 comes out. So f1, f2, check. Now, for the higher numbers, we do a little bit of trickery. So we note for phi 2, okay, that's roughly minus 0.618. As we take powers of that, that number is going to get smaller and smaller. So the idea is going to be when your n is far out enough, say bigger than 3 or 4, well, we can ignore that term. So the idea is if you want f sub n, compute 1 over square root of 5 times phi 1 raised to the nth power, and then just round. So let's check that for a specific example. So if I have f sub 8, on the previous board, we worked out that that was 21. If I take 1 over square root of 5, multiply by phi 1 to the 8th power, we're going to get 21.0095 and so on. So that comes out pretty close. Another rule we can use, again, if your n is out a little bit, if I want to get f sub n plus 1 from f sub n, all I need to do is multiply by phi 1 and round. Okay, it's the same idea here. You can ignore the effect of phi 2. Now, we start with, okay, our f sub 8 equal to 21, and I want to get f sub 9 equal to 34. I'm going to take f sub 8 times phi 1. So it's 21 times phi 1. Work it out with the calculator. I get 33.9787. And again, we're pretty close. Let's bring in the linear algebra. First step, I'm going to take the defining relations for the Fibonacci numbers. I'm going to encode them in matrix vector form. So if you note here, this is a linear equation. So I can set this up as a matrix vector product. Now, we have f1 equals 1, f2 equals 1. So I'm going to represent that as the vector 1, 1. For our recursive relation, we use this matrix vector product here. So if you multiply through, the first row times our vector just gives me f sub n. So we have the equation f sub n equals f sub n. There's no content there, but I'll need that equation if I want a square matrix. Then if we take the second row times our column, we get f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n. That's equal to f sub n plus 1. Now, let's work out a few iterations of our matrix vector product here. So if I take f sub 2, f sub 3, we're going to take our matrix times f sub 1, f sub 2. So these are both going to be equal to 1. And then we get this product here. Now we could work that out 
But the idea is I want to take a look at what's happening in the bigger picture. We do one more step. So if I want F3, F4, we take our matrix, multiply it by F2, F3. Okay, then you note F2, F3 is this product right here. So we have our matrix squared times one, one. Now, if you note what's happening, okay, there's gonna be a general formula. So I'll leave that as an exercise. So you should prove by induction, that if I want F sub n, F sub n plus one, it's gonna be equal to our matrix to the n minus one power times the vector one, one. So now you note, we have a power of a matrix here. So if I can diagonalize this matrix, we have a chance of getting a nice formula out. Step two, let's diagonalize our matrix. We start by computing the characteristic polynomial. That gives us lambda squared minus lambda minus one. The eigenvalues are gonna be the zeros of this polynomial. So I apply the quadratic equation. We get lambda equals one plus or minus square root of five over two. So we see where phi one and phi two come into the picture. Now, because phi one is a zero for this polynomial, we're gonna have that phi one squared minus phi one minus one equals zero, or phi one squared equals phi one plus one. Okay, so we could work that out directly if we wanted. We also have similar formula for phi two. Now, with our eigenvalues, we wanna find eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. So, for lambda equal to phi one, we're trying to solve for the null space of phi one times i minus our matrix. We're trying to find the null space of this matrix here. Note, we know that the null space is gonna be more than just zero. So all I need to do is to find a vector that zeroes out the first row. Okay, vector that'll do that is gonna be V1 equal to one, phi one. Now, if you wanted to row reduce, then you're gonna need the identities phi one minus one equals minus phi two, and phi one times phi two equals minus one. And they can get your answer that way. Now, we check our work, of course. So we take our matrix, multiply it by our eigenvector. You'll note, when we take the product, we get phi one, one plus phi one, but we've already seen that one plus phi one is phi one squared. So I factor out a phi one, and that gives me phi one times V one. That checks our work. So our matrix times V one gives me phi one V one back. Now, we could do all that same work, for phi two. Then our eigenvector is gonna be one phi two. We'll call that V two. Okay, you can check everything here. That gives us a basis of eigenvectors. So we set up our basis matrix P as V one V two or one one phi one phi two. How do we use our basis matrix? The formula is P inverse MP it's equal to our diagonal matrix, where the diagonal entries are our eigenvalues in the same order that we've ordered our eigenvectors in the basis. Now, to see this, if I multiply m times p, then we're just multiplying m by each column vector. Since the column vectors are eigenvectors, we just multiply by the corresponding eigenvalue. And then if I wanna multiply the columns by scalars. That's gonna be by multiplying by a diagonal matrix on the right-hand side. If we multiply by a diagonal matrix on the left-hand side, that's gonna push the scalars into the rows. Then we just push P to the other side as P inverse. Now, to apply this formula here, I'm gonna use the power formula for a matrix. First, I want to isolate M. So I push the P inverse and the P to the other side. If I take M to a power, what happens? So if we take M to the N, well, I'm going to write P D P inverse out N times. And then you'll note the P inverse P's are going to cancel out and this collapses to 
P d to the n, P inverse. If we go back to our matrix vector formula for the Fibonacci numbers, we okay, have F sub n, F sub n plus one is equal to m to the n minus one times one, one. We sub in for our m. What we'll have is P d to the n minus one, P inverse on our vector one, one. So now we could start pulling the numbers out of this. Final set, we compute. We start with our final formula. Where are the items we have here? P is our basis matrix, 1, 1, phi 1, phi 2. D to the n minus 1 is just a diagonal matrix with diagonal entries. Phi 1 to the n minus 1, phi 2 to the n minus 1. Then for P inverse, we just use our rule for computing the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. So it's going to be 1 over determinant. I switch the entries on the diagonal, negate the entries off the diagonal. So I'll have phi 2 and 1, minus 1, minus phi 1. Our determinant is just going to be phi 2 minus phi 1. Now, the determinant is going to collapse to minus square root of 5. So we'll just keep this like this for now. Put everything into the formula. So first we'll do these two matrices together, and I'll do this matrix and this vector. So these two matrices together give us this matrix. This matrix and this vector give us this vector. I note phi 2 minus 1 is minus phi 1. Minus phi 1 plus 1 is phi 2. So we can replace these entries into our vector here. And then when we multiply, note what comes out is going to be minus 1 over square root of 5 times these entries here. So when you push the minus 1 through and the 1 over square root of 5, we wind up getting that f sub n is equal to what we have for our Binet formula, and we'll also confirm it with f sub n plus 1. 